What's up guys, Commander Carl here, and I am finally done with this video. I have been working on this video for a lot longer than I needed to. So in late November, Running With Scissors has a holiday party that they do every single year. And my boy Mike J asked me if I wanted to go, and I said hell yes. And before I knew it, I had two tickets to paradise. No, 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 you nincompoops, not paradise from Postal 2. I'm, I'm parodying the song from, I just forget it. Let me just cut to the part where I go on the plane. Golly gee willikers, look at all these happy people. Now I'm not sure about you guys, but every time I get on a plane, I get really, really gassy. But I have come up with an effective strategy to deal with this without having to constantly go to the lavatory. Believe it or not, there is a secret to farting on planes. The idea is to release in short controlled bursts. This minimizes the risks of alerting nearby passengers, or in rare cases, catastrophic explosive decompression. Anyways, after a brief layover at the Denver airport, which I didn't really film because the Denver airport's not that interesting, I was finally in Tucson. And something I didn't really expect when I landed here was seeing all the damn F-16s buzzing around. Like, these things are so loud. Listen to this. And I think I'm definitely in a desert because there are sure as hell a lot of cacti here. After waiting for a little while, I was finally picked up by the legendary Mike J himself. Gosh, what a handsome hunk. Anyways, our first stop was an Allstate office, which also happens to house the Running With Scissors studio. I did not know what to expect behind this door, but I knew it was going to be awesome. No f***ing way, man. This is where the magic happens. This is the office of dolls. This office is overrun by f***ing dolls. That's and amazing. Two more in process. And man, there was a lot of stuff in this office. I mean, every conceivable thing you can purchase from Running With Scissors was in this studio. Including some pretty wicked sweet posters that I have never seen before. I mean, check this one out. So after hanging out with Mike J at the office for a couple hours, we went to P.F. Chang's to meet up with Vince, who had to wear these really doofy sunglasses because he recently had cataract surgery. After our brief lunch with the big man, it was time for me to get to the postal house, which is where I was going to be staying for the duration of my trip. Vince had purchased this house in the late 90s after the success of Postal 1, and he's done quite a few renovations to it as well. And as one may imagine, this house is absolutely filled to the brim with postal memorabilia. We're talking newspaper articles, fan-made stuff that was sent to Vince by mail over the years, just all kinds of stuff. The champ stamps. The champ stamps. Yeah. These are legit. These are they, yeah, the real stamps. Yeah, you know you could order. That's great. Man. Gotta get young Vince in there. Yeah. yeah. Boy, what a stallion. <laughs> it's you and Mike J. Look at that. Wow. It looks a lot different back then. What are we and the Gary Coleman. Yeah, the Gary Coleman son. Yeah. <laughs> now the backyard of this house was absolutely insane. Facing south towards Mexico, you get a gorgeous overlook of Tucson, and directly north of the house, you get the Catalina foothills, which are absolutely gorgeous. I knew I had to see more, so I decided to go explore the neighborhood a bit, and holy crap, I've never been in a neighborhood this nice before. This is insane, man. The next day, we headed out to a place called Reddington Pass, which is basically federal land that you are allowed to shoot on. Mike J invited his buddy Big Mike, who brought some heat, to do what Mike and Vince like to do most, shoot holes in signs. struck, but it didn't go off. Toss it. Again. Give it a shot. There we go. Later that night, Vince invited some of his oldest friends and former colleagues over for some good old-fashioned, world-class Italian home cooking. I was pretty unsurprised to learn that Vince is actually a very skilled chef. And tonight was the night Vince made his world famous Italian sausage bread. Now I know this thing looks like a giant elephant bread penis, but on the inside is a delectable melody of the highest quality Italian meats, cheeses, and seasonings that Tucson has to offer. That's when you know you're on. Look at this. It looks like a giant knish. <laughs> 
The next day was my final day, and Vince wanted to take me down to the basement to show me something really special. I honestly had no idea what to expect down here. Was it a room full of hot babes? Maybe there was a life-size replica of the postal dude himself. Maybe Vince was going to kill me because I've seen too much. Speculation aside, one thing I knew, I was stepping foot in a very sacred place. And look what Vince had stuffed away in the corner. <laughs> That's crazy. Man. Is this the one you wore in the movie? Yeah, this, this is it. That's right, the crotchy costume that Vince himself wore in the Postal movie. My curiosity was piqued. I had to see more. Wow. It's crazy. Oh, look at that. Postal 2 Share the Pain. You know, I actually never played this, I, I don't think. Hmm. Got the postal, <laughs> babes. Take one. I don't know if you... I've got one already. Yeah. Here's the uh, from Postal Two, the original artwork. Look at that. That's crazy. I'm not sure what this is. Uh, the postal movie. Yeah. There's a lot of good stuff down here. Wow. I Japanese. One of the original signs. That's the original. Oh, that's for rent. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got that too. You know what I mean? You yeah. get it for rent. You get, this you get is it great. All, you know? Korea. Postal Plus. Postal 3. <laughs> oh, classic. This is the original. Wow. I love how there's actual holes in the boxes. Yeah, that's uh, We want packaging. That's really cool. And there's a copy of Postal 2 with the Whiptail logo. And the Postal Clock, yeah. Where's Gary Sneaker, man? Gary Sneaker. Yeah, it's right here. What is it? You got it? Right here. <laughs> Gary Coleman's Sneaker with the little mocap things on it. That's right, folks. Gary Coleman wore these sneakers for Postal 2. I'm gonna smell them. <laughs> the feeling I had in this room was indescribable. It was like a window into another man's life, his hard work, his blood, sweat, and tears over a period of 30 plus years. This room wasn't just postal stuff, it was everything throughout Vince's life. His work while at Atari, his work on children's entertainment games at RSP. I, I felt like I was at a really cool video game museum, except you could pick up and touch everything. Being in this room and having Vince show me so much postal stuff, you, you can just tell that running with scissors is his life, it's his baby. And it's a baby that he's kept alive since the studio was founded in the late 90s. Which makes running with scissors one of the longest running indie game development studios around. And Vince will be the first to tell you there's been some close calls, but this man has managed to keep the lights on for over 25 years, and I had to know how he managed to do it. We were willing to make the sacrifices and most important, I always realized, do what you can do best. Don't try to do more. And that's the big mistake. Many de developers and publishers to this day, I mean, that's it. Let's hire 100 people. Let's make 20 games. Let's blow up the world. Everybody's out of business. Who didn't expect Embrace it to OD? I mean, I've been waiting for it. So this year it happened. You can't acquire a hundred studios in five years and expect to be in business. I mean, there's just a common sense here, but you know, when you got investors money, it's not your money. I, I don't understand. I still deal very much, uh, you know, in my world, one plus one is 11. <laughs> Being my last day at the Postal House and in Tucson, I really wanted to soak up the outdoors and some of the views just one last time. Especially since back home, it was basically a frozen wasteland. I soaked up the landscape, took some deep breaths, and of course, I wanted to say goodbye to one of the goodest boys of all, Champ. What the? Ah, stupid dog. And with that, I guess it's time to head back inside and pack my bags and get back home. Well,
gonna miss this. Definitely gonna miss these views. <laughs> now, Mike J was the one who was gonna take me to the airport, but he was running a little bit late. So Vince wanted to take the time to show me a few more things around his place. The first of which is a stainless steel wolf gas range. Now, when it comes to cooking, I don't know my ass from a hole in the ground, but for someone like Vince, this thing was a wet dream that came true. Except without all the uh, cleanup, if you catch my drift. He showed me some more pictures. <laughs> Jesus. My sister's wedding. I got to see his wardrobe, which housed all of his prized suits and hats and shoes and all the stuff Vince likes to wear on occasion. I even got to see his official director's chair from the Postal movie, which was pretty cool. Finally, Mike J arrived, and before we go to the airport, he wanted to show me what real Mexican food tasted like, and it was absolutely orgasmic. I didn't really bother taking any footage inside this restaurant because I really just wanted to soak up the last moments I had here. Not long after lunch, Mike J dropped me off at the airport, and before I knew it, I was back on a flying tin can, playing a game of ass gas sneaky leaks. And that's it. That's most of the Tucson trip. I actually didn't film everything I did um, because as you guys know, I'm not some hotshot YouTuber with a camera crew that follows me around everywhere. So I had to film all this myself and I really wanted to be present for some of the moments. But I managed to film everything that I, I felt mattered. So I thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please share it and be sure to like, subscribe and all that jizz jazz, you know, whatever. All right, that's all the time I have today, guys. Commander out.